friends, sisters and brothers, comrades. Many of us uh, are appalled by the Australian government's uh, inhumane uh, treatment of refugees and asylum seekers uh, coming to Australia. Many of us have taken part in rallies, demonstrations, actions to try and get the Australian government to treat uh, refugees and asylum seekers, trying to get to this country uh, in, a, in a decent and humane way. But we also must say that if you are concerned about the plight of refugees and asylum seekers, you must also be opposed to the war on Syria. Because we know when we have seen that there are hundreds of thousands, hundreds of thousands of men, women and children who are fleeing Syria at this very moment. They are fleeing to Jordan, fleeing to Iraq, fleeing to all kinds of uh, surrounding uh, countries. They are, fleeing a, they are fleeing a war, but what they're really fleeing from is the Free Syrian Army. We know that the Free Syrian Army is neither free, nor is it in its majority Syrian, nor is it an army. The Free Syrian Army has many components, some of which are Al-Qaeda, some of which are Salafis, some of which are Wahhabis, all of whom embark on murderous rampage across Syria, murdering and torturing anyone who opposes them. So if you are, if you are concerned about the plight of refugees around the world, you must oppose the war in Syria. We've just had the example in the last week where a refugee boat uh, in the Mediterranean, or actually there's been two refugee boats sink trying to reach the island of Lampedusa off the coast of Italy. Around about 350 people at least uh, have drowned or have died uh, trying to get to that island. Some of them are from uh, Somalia, uh, fleeing the US-backed uh, occupation where the US is, is backing Kenya, uh, Burundi and Uganda and occupying Somalia. But some of them no doubt were also fleeing from Syria. So this is what was happening around the world. And, the, and if the UNHCR and all of the uh, refugee uh, action uh, collectives around the country who have done a lot of good work uh, in uh, trying to pressure the Australian government into treating refugees humanely here, they must also take a stand in this conflict here and they must defend Syria against a, a US-backed war. Friends, Barack Obama and Tony Abbott claim to be Christians. They claim to be very pious and very reverent uh, Christians. But what we have seen in uh, Syria, uh, I'm not sure exactly of which uh, village it was. Some of the Syrian comrades can, can fill us in. But there was one village in Syria uh, which apparently is the last place on earth where the langu language of Jesus Christ uh, was spoken. Malula, thank you. It, they spoke the language of Aramaic, or at least they did uh, when they are conducting their Christian church services. No, they talk between each other. They speak Arabic. Oh, okay. That we speak Arabic between Amalek and ourselves. Okay, so they speak Arabic as well. That's very good. Uh, but this, uh, th this village uh, was apparently destroyed by Al-Qaeda, armed by the United States. And we, we are to believe that, that, that Barack Obama and Tony Abbott are carrying out God's work. Uh, when we see uh, not only Christians, uh, but, but Alawis, uh, all other uh, Shia Muslims, anyone who is not uh, one of the extreme Sunni sects, I just murdered uh, without uh, uh, compunction whatsoever. Um, so that it, it is a major hypocrisy. Uh, when, when Syria, we know Syria is a secular state that uh, protects all religions and all uh, minorities, at least to the best of its ability. Friends, also this week, uh, we, we, we know of the, no the Nobel Peace Prize. This week, the Nobel Peace Prize has been uh, awarded 
uh, to the OPCW, the Organization for the Prevention of Chemical Weapons. This is the body that is supposedly uh, res is, uh, responsible for the decommissioning of Syria's chemical weapons stocks. But I want to say to you today that I, it is my view that the Syrian government, it is the Syrian government that deserves the Nobel Peace Prize. Because they are the ones who are uh, preventing a war from breaking out even further. They are the ones who are preventing the Free Syrian Army from toppling the Syrian government, and which will most likely, or almost certainly, result in a, a Libya or an Iraq type situation if the Syrian government is, is overthrown uh, using uh, US weapons via Saudi Arabia, via Turkey, uh, via Israel, and via Qatar, and so, and so on. Friends, I don't, I don't always, uh, I don't entirely agree with everything Bashar al-Assad says and does. But I agree with this on one point that he said in an interview with a US Democratic uh, congressman. He said that the term opposition is a political term. The term opposition uh, indicates a person or a group of people who have a, a set of political ideas who argue for them and try to form political parties and form political groups um, in order to put forward uh, a set of ideas. Uh, President Assad said this label, this label of opposition cannot be applied to those who are trying to overthrow the Syrian government because uh, the so-called so opposition, Free Syrian Army, uh, are not trying to put forward a set of ideas, they're not trying to uh, convince anybody of a a set of politics or a set of demands. They are simply trying to overthrow uh, the Syrian government and many of them want to establish an, an Islamic State uh, with the assistance uh, of, of the United States and Western countries. So this opposition is not an opposition in the sense of a political opposition. Uh, this opposition, I, I, I call them death squads. They, they are murderous death squads. Uh, they, they are not a political opposition. Uh, friends, I, I, I'm part of the socialist left in this country. Unfortunately, there has been a debate amongst socialists about the nature of the conflict in Syria. There should be many more socialists here today. Some socialists get caught up in the idea that there is a revolution or a democratic uprising occurring in Syria and that we have to support it. They, claim, they also claim to be opposed to a, a U.S. war at the same time as supporting the U.S. revolution, a U.S.-backed revolution, a U.S.-backed democratic uprising. But this line, of, line uh, is self-defeating and ends up supporting the U.S. Uh, war aims on Syria. Because a U.S. strike on Syria, as well as uh, funding for Al-Qaeda, uh, Salafists, Wahhabists, and, uh, and the others, uh, is aimed at overthrowing uh, the Syrian government. So if you were to overthrow, if they were to overthrow the Syrian government uh, using US funded weapons, uh, using US uh, political support of uh, Bahrain, Saudi Arabia, Israel, Qatar, Turkey, uh, then you are working with the, the US imperialists. There is, there is no uh, running away from this fact. Maybe there are some uh, moderate elements who are not as extreme as the Salafis and Wahhabis. That may be the case. But whatever, whatever, there may even be disagreements, there may even be skirmishes between them. But in the end they are all firing their guns in the same direction. They're firing their bullets in the same direction. And they're firing their bullets in the direction of the Syrian Ara Arab army and the Syrian government. So, right now, it is the, the, the duty of the left uh, internationally um, to stand with the Syrian people, stand with the Syrian uh, government because this is a conflict against uh, Western imperialism. Friends, in my view what is driving this war is a very deep uh, capitalist uh, financial and economic crisis that is afflicting uh, the world. We are seeing some of it here in Australia. 
it is worse uh, in Europe and it is much much worse in the United States. Uh, we see unemployment, job insecurity, uh, cutbacks to government services, casualisation, uh, casualisation, all all kinds of assaults on, on on working people. The United States, unfortunately, to save its system, has to wage war to try and pull itself out of recession. But we need to stand for a different a different world and a different system. In the, in the process of stopping or doing what we can to stop this war on Syria, uh, we will uh, ensure that there is peace not only in Syria, but also so there is no further strikes on Iran and no ultimate, ultimately more strikes on the ultimate targets of Russia and China, who are the only are the big targets that stand in the way of, of US uh, domination of the globe. So, friends, we need an anti-war movement, and rallies and demonstrations just like this are extremely important, and we need to continue to do them. But I would also say that if the war breaks out, we need to, to spread the anti-war movement into the workers' movement uh, and get push our trade unions to take action, industrial action, uh, take action such as preventing the flow of materials to the Australian army, prevent uh, the spreading of... Uh, corporate uh, media propaganda uh, which is drumming up support for the war and actions like these uh, because the anti-war movement uh, against the war in Iraq on 2003, in 2003 was the, one of the largest movements in world history but ultimately it didn't stop the war because it didn't move uh, in, into the sphere of the workers movement I think that's what we need to do um, if, if the, uh, the war uh, breaks out into a a regional or a world war in the, in the case of Syria, which unfortunately uh, could be could be likely. But anyway, I will leave it there. But thank you all for coming today. Everyone should congratulate themselves. Defend Syria. Stop the war in Syria.